Waiting for Yahoo's killer app? Good news and bad news for the SpaceX Falcon 9. And Reddit knows exactly how to push our buttons. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 316 for Tuesday, April 14th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. Welcome. I am Megan Maroney. This is the show where we talk about the latest and greatest tech news of the day in a short format for your 25-minute commute to make laundry folding more enjoyable while you stare at the timer on the Reddit button or while you're sitting back at the end of the day with, the, with your feet up and drinking the beverage of your choice. We'll get to the headlines after the break, but first joining us today is Harry McCracken, technology editor for Fast Company. Welcome, Harry. Hey, it's great to be here. So you just published an excellent profile of Marissa Meyer and her mobile strategy for Yahoo. Among other points, you argue that Yahoo has yet to create an app that has captured the imagination of a large audience. Now, during your interview, did uh, Meyer shed any light on why they might not have succeeded in this realm yet? She actually said, first of all, she acknowledged it's true that while they've had some apps that have gotten good reviews and have kind of gotten Yahoo back on the map, they haven't had something that's a blockbuster in terms of huge numbers of users or the clear potential to make a lot of money. And she did talk about one area to keep looking for, and that's messaging. Uh, there's still you know, hundreds of millions of people who use Yahoo Mail. They have a long history and things like Yahoo Messenger. And she mentioned that as an area that's worth keeping tabs on. So you write that Yahoo's mobile growth outpaces the industry average. Uh, what does that mean exactly? Who, who are they competing with most in, directly with mobile? Well, there, there are four big companies. Uh, the, the two really big ones are Google and Facebook, and they're just huge. Yahoo right now is neck and neck with Twitter, and bo both of them are pretty distant behind the, the two biggest guys. Um, so it's to be a long time before Yahoo catches up with either Google or Facebook, and their job right now, I'd say, is to try to be clearly number three ahead of Twitter. Right. I mean, you talk about how she said that messaging was the going to be their killer app. Like that, that's how, you know, they, they succeeded with Yahoo Messenger. But I mean, at this point, could they really catch up with Facebook Messenger? I mean, is that is that what everyone's mostly using these days? And Twitter? One of the, inter one of the interesting things is the two guys who started WhatsApp were both Yahoo messaging engineers who left to do a startup. Um, too bad those guys didn't stay there. Um, <laughs> you know, they're not going to catch up with Yacht, with Facebook Messenger anytime soon unless something really transformative happens. But on the other hand, they don't have to because they, they, they have quite a bit of scale. They've gotten a lot more sophisticated about selling mobile advertising. And so I think there's lots of potential for them to grow, even if, if they don't uh, become the absolute titan of the industry. Right. So what's the history there? Did they leave um, before Meyer started um, to start WhatsApp? That, that came before they her tenure, right? They did. They left a few years ago. And she's actually, Marissa Meyer has always been a very gracious person about the idea that people you work with leave and start interesting new things. She was that way at Google. And I didn't use this quote in the story, but she actually complimented those guys and, and, and uh, said that it was exciting to see that Yahoo alumni were doing something really important. Right. Well, what was interesting is you talk about um, how when she got there, a lot of what they were creating, they were using HTML5 and just creating, saying, well, we'll create one app that will work on all these platforms. And when she got there, the first thing she did was try uh, Yahoo, uh, I think, email messenger on her on her iPhone. And she said it was all jittery. And, you know, she, she just faced a lot of problems that what, what did she do to solve those problems? Well, they had been sort of wavering back and forth, along with the rest of the industry, to be fair, about whether you should try to use web technologies to build one experience that would work on Android and iOS and everywhere else, or whether you should build the best possible native apps you should for each platform. And like you say, she got there and she saw Yahoo Mail, and she could tell right away that it was web-based, even though they didn't tell her. And she basically said, boom, from now on, moving forward, we're going to build native apps. And... Um, that was the right thing to do. I don't, it wasn't a super visionary thing to do because the rest of the industry at more or less the same time was also coming to the same conclusion. Right. And so they built, they built things like a really good version of Yahoo Weather and Yahoo News, News Digest. And uh, those are way slicker than anything you could do if you were only using HTML5 technology. 
Right, and that's where the success has come, right? You say that $1.2 billion in revenue from ads from Yahoo Mail, Yahoo Weather, Yahoo News, and Flickr on mobile. Like that, that's where the big portion is coming from. That's right. That includes both their mobile apps and also, you know, people searching using Yahoo in mobile browsers and so forth. Right. So, so when you spoke to her, it was Yahoo's mobile developer conference back in February. What were some of the things they announced at that conference? Well, they announced a Yahoo uh, mobile developer suite. They, they bought a cool company called Flurry, which does analytics that tells mobile developers how people are using their apps. Uh, they brought a company called Bright Roll, that, which does video advertising, both on the desktop and mobile. And uh, they have their own ad platform. And um, so basically, if, if you're a mobile app developer and you want to figure out how to monetize your apps, you can plug in this Yahoo technology that, that will give you analytics and search and ads as as a one-stop package. And that's something Yahoo hasn't really done before. And and do you, I mean, in your opinion, do you think this will be successful? They have a lot of competition, so it's not going to be easy, but there aren't all that many companies that can offer the full package. Um, you know, Google and Facebook are also doing similar things. And Yahoo is at a point where they can offer something that's at least roughly comparable and something that a reasonable third-party developer m might choose. Right. So your article also goes into a little bit about the Yahoo's relationship with Alibaba. Um, so, so what's the situation now? What, what will happen when they, they're spinning off their investments or they spun off their investment? Explain that situation that's going on now. Well, since Marissa Meyer got there, Yahoo stock has been a great investment. It's, it's grown and grown and grown and grown. But at least part of the reason why that's been true is because a few years ago, they made this really visionary investment in Alibaba, this Chinese e-commerce giant that just gets bigger and bigger. And Wall Street has been saying, hey, Yahoo, uh, separate that off so it's not tangled up with what you're doing. And they announced earlier this year they're doing this. And at some point this year, if they stay on schedule, their Alibaba investment will be a separate company, which essentially means that Marissa Meyer is really going to be under the microscope in a lot of ways because Yahoo will come back to being Yahoo. And if it turns out to be a good investment, it will be because these core applications and services and their advertising-based model is doing well. It won't be because something else like Alibaba is, is an incentive to invest in it. Right. Well, you also talk about how, you know, a CEO is never going to say, you know, we're thinking of selling our company or we're, you know, anything like that. I mean, but in your opinion, do you think that would be their best chance at success at this point? I mean, there are a lot of people saying that. There, there are no shortage of people who have advice for Yahoo. Some people say it should get way smaller because it's still a rather large company with a lot of employees. Some they say they should merge with AOL. Even some of the people on Wall Street who are fans of Marissa Meyer are saying that, you know, she has succeeded in getting them back in the game. And the best end game now is for them to do something like sell to an Alibaba or to a company like SoftBank from Japan. And she doesn't talk like that. She, she talks about the long-term strategy. Um, but there are a bunch of possibilities for Yahoo, and some of them involve something big happening in the short-term future. All right. Well, Harry, thank you so much. Your opinion is always an interesting one. Harry McCracken is the technology editor at Fast Company. Are you working on anything else that you are allowed to tell us about yet? You know, I didn't tell people about the Yahoo story while I was working on that. So anything exciting I'm working on is... Uh, Kind of the same thing. We'll okay. see what happens. We'll have to wait for it. Thank you so much. Take care. My pleasure. Coming up, Google's new family-friendly app and how Reddit turned the internet into crazy town. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to develop an app, take better photos, improve your memory, or build a new website. Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. You can stream thousands of video courses on demand and learn on your own schedule. I've been watching a new course called Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge First Look. If you just bought one of these phones or you're considering buying one of them, I highly recommend this course, especially if you're switching over from an iPhone. If you want to learn a new programming language, there are courses on Swift, PHP, C, C++, Python, Ruby, Java, and more. They also have an innovative series called Code Clinic, where lynda.com issues a series of code challenges and authors share their solutions using different programming languages. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2 and we thank them for their support.
Now on to a few more stories we're, fo- we're following today. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket carrying the Dragon cargo capsule successfully launched this afternoon. The Dragon spacecraft made it safely into orbit, carrying supplies to the International Space Station. But according to a tweet from SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, the Falcon 9 rocket didn't quite stick the landing. The rocket landed on the drone ship, but the landing was too hard for survival. In case you're wondering why it was important for the rocket to come back in one piece, I've got three words for you. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Also, rockets are really, really expensive. And speaking of ill-fated missions, Ars Technica reports that the crew of Apollo 13 have now been immortalized in a collector's set of Lego minifigures. These Lego celebrate the 45th anniversary of the Apollo 13 mission launch, which happens this Friday. Fun fact, the plural of Lego is Lego. Who knew? You probably did. According to the Android developer blog, Google Play will offer a new program called Designed for Families. It will give people a way to opt in to a more family-friendly Android app store that will only include apps that meet specific requirements. Now, this is an interesting move on Google's part and one that Apple might consider, especially since they've recently been criticized about the fact that the iOS app store is perhaps too family-friendly with a review process that seems to exclude some apps entirely based on the somewhat random moral code. Now, Netflix just expanded their accessibility options. The company announced today that they would start adding audio descriptors for the visually impaired on select titles, beginning with their hit original series, Daredevil. Why Daredevil and not the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, you might ask? You might ask if you haven't yet gotten around to watching Daredevil or you're not familiar with the story. Daredevil features a visually impaired main character, and when the show premiered on Friday without audio descriptions, fans took to Twitter and Change.org to complain. And Netflix, to their credit, was quick to respond. The company says audio descriptions will also soon be available on the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, House of Cards, and other major original Netflix shows, as well as select other shows and movies. Audio descriptions are narrations of what's currently going on on the screen, including facial expressions, physical actions, descriptions of costume, scene changes, and more. I think we have a clip. It might be a spoiler of Daredevil. It might not. It's just the title credits, but we have a clip to show you of what they sound like. In a blood-red fog are images of a skyscraper, a broken fragment of a suspension bridge, a city skyline, a church steeple, and an angel, all drizzled with a thick red liquid. As it pours into a vat, an image of a horned deity rises from the liquid. Written by Drew Goddard, it half glances over its glistening muscular red shoulders. Directed so by those are the descriptions. Uh, they're very descriptive. They, you have to turn them on to be hearing that. Otherwise, it's just the music. And finally, have you pressed the Reddit button yet? What's your flare color? Do you regret pressing the button? Do you have no idea what I'm talking about? Let me try to explain. On April Fool's Day, the social networking site Reddit posted a blog entry that contained a button and said, when this post is 10 minutes old, a button and a timer will become active. The button went on, I mean, the post went on to explain that the timer, the button explains nothing, by the way. The timer next to the button counts down from 60 seconds and starts over every time someone clicks the button. It warned that you could only click the button once And if you hadn't created an account before April 1st, 2015, you weren't allowed to click the button at all. What has happened in the last two weeks since this button was posted is nothing short of a bizarre social experiment spawning clans, conspiracy theories, and competitive status symbols that rival that of your chosen Apple Watch Band. As I write this, the button has been pushed over 740,000 times. Now, if you choose to push the button, you'll be given a color according to what time you clicked it in the 67, 60 second countdown. The color appears in a little dot next to your name. Purple is for the people who couldn't wait for the clock to go under 50 seconds. The longer you wait, the better your status, according to the internets. According to the Washington Post, the clock has never dropped below 27 seconds. I have not clicked the button yet, but I really want to. I really want to. Also, I'm considering selling my login information to the highest bidder. Get in contact with me if if you're interested, if you purples know who you are. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.